We all set, John? Everyone all set? I'd like to call this meeting of the regular select board to order, please. Uh, all those who are able, please stand for the pledge. And John, would you please okay. lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Brittany, would you do the roll call, please? Sure. We have Tom Andrew Penwalta. Here. Joseph Diver. Here. John Boyle. Here. Bob Bishop. Here. Ed Holland. Here. And Mark Schrapp. Yes, here. Okay. Um, there are no minutes. Uh, Nancy is out, so we'll just do that in the next meeting, okay? And I'd like to announce a couple changes in our regular scheduled agenda. Um, we had stri stricken out the discussion with the Northern Berkshire Solid Waste District. They could not make it tonight. And we have added the Dalton Civic Art uh, Committee's Light Up the Night Holiday Parade. And we have an, a, a resignation and an appointment to the Stormwater Commission. Okay? Okay, this is a time that when the public may address the board on any item listed on the media agenda or any issue or matter of the town. If you don't intend on addressing the board at this time, we ask you to do the following. Please identify yourself by name, address, or the company slash institution you represent. The public address to the board segment will last no longer than 30 minutes. Please make your comments concise and try not to repeat statements made by others. Please address your comments to the board chair. Discussion or debate on any issue may not take place at this time. Questions on procedural matters may be answered by the chair or the designee. Please be cordial and respectful of others. If anyone wishes to be recognized and an agenda item is discussed by the board, please make that request at this time. This request may be granted by the board chair. Address comments to the board chair and be concise. Now, is there anyone in here that would like to speak on any items or anything listed on the... No, I will. Okay. The triad. The triad? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what number? Uh, eleven. Eleven. Yeah, well, eleven. If necessary. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. First, we have on the agenda. We have Dalton Civic Arts Community Light Up the Holiday Parade. Mr. Boyle, would you yes, make a motion? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I move that we grant permission to the uh, <coughs> CRA and the Dalton Beautification Committee to hold their annual Light of the Holiday Parade on Saturday, December 14, 2019, from 4.30 to 8 p.m. I'll second that motion. Okay, a motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, I said Unification Committee. I meant Dalton Civic Arts Committee. Okay. All those in favor? <laughs> uh, uh, aye. Opposed? Okay, that's awesome. It's usually well attended. Yeah. Right? Rain or shine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hopefully not, right? <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> okay, next we have appointments to the Dalton Beautification Commission. Mr. Chairman, I move to ratify the appointment of Pamela J. Turner of 30 Sunset Drive to the Dalton Beautification Committee. All right. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh. Uh, for initial term to expire on June 30th, 2022. I'll second it. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Pam. Okay, next. First of all, we're going to have to do a resignation on the stormwater. someplace. Is it in there? Let's see. Okay. No, I don't have it. Okay. Do you have it, John? Uh, right here. No, you don't have it either. Right here. No, I got that. Who resigned? Edwin. <laughs> oh! Congratulations, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I move that we ratify the appointment of Andrew G. Peronick of 165 High Street to the Stormwater 
Storm Water Management Commission for an initial term to expire on June 30th, 2020. I'll second that. Okay, so motion has been made and second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and this is to take the place of Edward who resigned formally and I think we have to accept it with regret, but yeah. I understand. Thank you. Okay. That's mine. Okay, I almost put it in my final one. So you would mess you up good. Mr. Okay. Chairman, would you be all right if we took number nine out of order? Absolutely. Okay. Okay, I got it right there. Okay, next is the resolution uh, Dalton Triad donation. Mr. Chairman, I move that the town of Dalton accept on behalf of the Dalton Police Department a gift of three hundred and no cents dollars from the Dalton Triad to purchase traffic cones to assist Dalton police officers with public safety and visibility. Whereas the Massachusetts General Laws for, Chapter 44, Section 53A empowers the select board to approve the acceptance of grants or gifts of funds by any officer or department on behalf of the town. I'll second that. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Just a note to the committee for the triad or here. Absolutely. Well, thank you, fellas. Uh, I don't know how many people are familiar with what triad is, but I did bring some information for you. Um, it's you. been around this lady back here, Helga Knappi, started it along with um, Dan Filio and Chief Filio when he was uh, the chief, and I think Carmen Masmiano uh, was part of it also. Let me hand you the check too while we're oh, here. Oh, wow. I, thought the, <laughs> I thought the chief was going to be here tonight, but uh, he's probably. He's smart Watch, around. He's it should say Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> but anyways, Triad, just for those that don't know, it's a collaboration between the police department, the sheriff's department up there, the DA's office, and um, fire department. We now, and it's open to any senior within Berkshire County, and there are triads throughout, actually, the country. So we meet the third Wednesday of every month at the Senior Center. All seniors are welcome. Our numbers are increasing because we do have the Chief from Hinsdale is coming down, uh, representatives from Windsor are coming, and please come at some point. Uh, your Chairman, Mr. Bishop, came one day and kind of caught us up on what was going on in town, and you're all welcome at any time to come down to the Senior Center, one o'clock in the afternoon. This month, next week, this week, we have a representative from BCAC coming to tell the seniors what's going on and what's <coughs> available from BCAC. So cool. please come and enjoy. We always have refreshments afterwards and usually have a speaker. You don't have to be a senior. You don't, no, <laughs> you don't have to be a senior. And I think it would be mass, most informative for you to come seeing that you're in the detective department, <laughs> and uh, as well as John Boyle and Mr. Dyra, John Bishop comes regularly, and Margaret is involved quite a bit with us. It would be appreciated if you came down. She is the wonderful lady that brought it to town. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your work and thank you for the money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? You, it came from the South. And I'm surprised they never lynched the guy. What did it? Because it was you don't you don't scam a sheriff's mother, especially his mother. You can scam the wife probably, but not the mother. And, uh, that's how it started, and it is still gone. They have one out in California, Indiana, Wisconsin. I've gone to many se seminars. Williamsburg, Ohio, and you see a lot and hear a lot. It is so informative, you really be surprised. Well, thank you That's for starting good. that. It's awesome. We're, we're okay, you may want to point out that you also have a greatly attended by all the four major organizations. You have a picnic usually in July. Yes, we always, it's always have a big event, event, and we all try and, to get there uh, for a town. 
thanks to our yeah, sure. sheriff, yeah. sheriff and yeah. about even He's always there, yeah. Even Carm Masmiano started coming in on it, mm -hmm. and then uh, Sheriff Bowler carried on with it, and it's great. We have a wonderful yeah. picnic every yeah. year. Yeah, last year the DA was there. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. DA is coming always. Yeah. Well, thank you. We have a Christmas party to come to. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, ladies. This is awesome, and thank you for the gift. And now we will vote to accept it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you for your generosity, Aye. and thank you Aye. for doing your hard work. Okay. Please come. Yeah, right. And now we need to formally sign the gift here. Just this one. There's a spell there and all that. Just. Yeah, I'm spelling. Yeah. Spelling. Yeah. 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 She might be able to uh, correct it if I was destroying it. You have a way of doing it. I think I'll do the transfer station next to it. Yep. And then the rent will be, we'll do that after we get rid of it. After everybody gets rid of it. Okay, next I'd like to uh, move to item 10, the transfer station. The hours of uh, the compost area first. Uh, I have received an email from a lady that's upset that they're trying to get, they can't get to the dump sometimes on Saturday and they, and she has no storage for the trans, uh, all her materials she needs to bring over to the, the brush pile. Uh, she's not the only one, there's been, a, I've heard from quite a few people in regards to this, especially this time of year and in the springtime when there's heavy leaves down and stuff. And I'm hoping that we can come up with some way of opening that up more for the residents of the town. And I'm opening up for, John, do you have any input on this? I know you wanted to keep it to the one day, but is there any way possible you can open it up more days, at least one or two more days a week? I think if we get our um, building and grounds maintenance person hired and on staff, maybe we could work it out. It, uh, if we could have it manned, um, I believe we may have, we're in the process of hiring somebody. So if, if we could get that person on board and, and we can arrange to have them there a couple hours during the week, you know, maybe one, one other day, we could probably manage it. But other than that, if there's nobody there, they just, everybody comes in. There's there's just too much. Yeah, do you see our point too, but there's a lot of people that can't get there on Saturdays, and when they do, it's really usually packed, they said. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the way it was years ago. I, I, I just don't, I mean, unless we have the staff, it's, it's hard to keep. How it. soon do you think this person will be on board? Um, can you? Yeah, we're, we're going to, uh, John and I are going to do the next Friday. He's already been just, remember, that's the position that's split between building maintenance and highway. So, uh, Pat has already interviewed the person, and John and I have to follow up, and then it'll be as soon as, if, if you know, if we hire him, it'll be as soon as he can come in. Okay, so in maybe two weeks or so? Yeah, hours? roughly speaking. Okay. But Any other important yeah, reports? The lease season will be over by then. True. The weeks given in November. And if I recall, there are really two main issues on that on that time, and one was the commercial landscapers were coming in, adding to the load, which then created the second issue, which was a safety issue for our our team members. Right. So it's a matter of balancing that out to yeah. offset the commercial haulers. Yeah, there's just nobody to police the area to, to keep them out. Um, and even Saturday they're coming in. We took some pictures this Saturday of a couple coming in. Um, you can't stop it 100%, but it's it's just getting out of hand. 
Yeah, I think, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind my saying sure. So again, to reiterate that, for years and years and years, it was only open on Saturdays. And it was closed during the winter. And John suggested an experiment a few years ago of trying to leave it open and, you know, we'd have the police take notice and the transfer station attendant take notice. But you can see, if you've been over there, what has happened. I mean, it's being abused and it endangers our highway workers. I want to draw your attention to our, the Highway Association uh, submitted a letter this afternoon for your consideration about their concerns, too, because they feel it endangers their members, all this uh, chipping that they have to do in these high piles has become pretty dangerous. So I think, uh, I agree with John, I think we probably will be able to arrange it so that we can open it one day during the week, and we'll have to, when <clears throat> we bring the guy on board, we'll do that, but I don't think there's any possibility, unless we want to hire somebody, to, to keep that open the hours we've had it. Okay, let me ask you this. How many hours a day, Saturday, does this guy work who is currently doing it? Well, there's, n there's nobody doing it now. No, I thought somebody was doing no, it on Saturday. No, it hasn't been manned. John's just opening it on Saturdays uh -huh. to try to restrict the people from coming in there during the commercial okay. holidays, right. basically. And, and people, remember, this is only meant for residents with a sticker. You have to have a transfer station sticker to get in, and that's how we, you know, from the time I started here, it was operating that way until just a several years ago. It always operated that way, um, and I we realize that uh, that it we provided a great convenience to people to get in there all during. That's what we were trying to do, but unfortunately, you know, uh, it's called the free rider problem. When you when you have some good free, it's abused and it's been abused, and so now unfortunately we, we do have to do something about it. But like I said, I've already spoken to Pat about it. And John and I haven't um, quite finished talking about it, but we think. Given the person's schedule being split between highway and, and town hall, we could make one day in addition to Saturdays available. So what we did in the past, and we're still only open on Saturdays, we assigned the transfer, our attendant, to the transfer station brush area on Saturday. And then when it was closed during the winter, we assigned them to you know custodial duties in town hall, senior center, and so on, <coughs> library. Any other comments? <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, Gary Steiner, 10 Home Terrace. I, I don't know, I have nothing to do with this, but I know a lot of people in Dalton, if it's leaves, John, you know, like leaves, a lot of that, majority, everybody goes to Holiday Farm and they recycle it, you know, and they don't mind, that's open all the time. You just go and you dump it off there. I mean, that's just something, food for thought, maybe, that help you out. Uh, I don't know. You check, I mean, because everybody goes there. Just every, where are you bringing your leaves? Holiday Farm, right up, you know that right off Route Nine. You know what that is. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know if you'd have to talk to Holiday Farm about that. No, he's, he they ever just he's got a sign out there saying I'll take leave. So. Yeah. yeah. So we, I mean, if people maybe are more aware of it, you know, that would help It's an alternative. It's an alternative. When we closed our brush pile, just uh, yeah, brush oh, like a couple months ago when, when we closed it during the week. Everybody was hauling their brush up to Holiday Farm. He got inundated because we weren't taking it anymore, and now he's closed his brush pile. You can't dump it there either. Yeah. You can jump leaves up there, right. yeah. but he won't. He won't Just accept leave. brush Close anymore. Okay. That's how much we were taking. Wow. Okay, so Just we'll have to wait for this person to get on board, I assume. And and if leaves are an issue, suggest to people that they take their really? leaves up to uh, Where does Holiday Pittsfield Farm? take theirs to? They can take it to uh, Vicon or what, whatever it is. They now. can't take it there? Yeah. Resident, no. They have a resident sticker policy to take it there. I mean, here's the thing we're providing a service, and it's, uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, they're just, we're going to have to make do with what we got until we can. Yeah. Okay. So you'll let us know as soon as that person's hired and we can get going. We'll make a public announcement on it in the meantime. We'll come back to you with a plan for okay. opening hours. Anybody out there that has leaves, if they need to do it during the week, during the holiday farm, but not rush. Yeah. Maybe we can get that on the website. Yeah. We have only one day available because of uh, employment constrictions. And uh, <coughs> holiday farm is an alternative for leaves only. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, John. 
Uh, Ken, we're not going to do the contract update. You want to do the contract? You got anything Quick. for the contract update? I do, but we can do it later if you like. Let's do it right now. Oh, okay. So I just wanted to let you know what's happening with it. Remember, there's actually two contracts going on here. One is our contract with Casella, and I've been kind of negotiating over the phone, uh, and I'm trying to get the, the, the principal in Casella, who I'm dealing with, to come here and look at the at the transfer station for recycling, although he is very familiar with the transfer station because he used to work for Allied. Uh, and I've suggested to him that I'm going to make a formal proposal that he keep his rates, uh, that Casella keep its rates as they are for the rest of the fiscal year. I don't know if he'll accept that or not, but he says they're still analyzing the operations of the transfer station, so they're not really ready to get into the financial aspects. And I said, great, at least keep the prices to the end of the calendar year, and why don't you keep them to the end of the fiscal year? So, so that's where we stand with that. So that's the first contract. The second contract is the materials recycling facility down in Springfield uh, is renewing its contract with all the communities in western Massachusetts. Uh, and for the very first time, the proposal has uh, a requirement that the, the communities pay a tipping fee. Well, it's going to be roughly $100 a ton. And uh, right now, the recyclables are only bringing about $10 and $20 a ton in return when they, when they process the recyclables. We have to um, sign on to that by January if we're going to continue with it, but we've got to send our recyclables somewhere. So I've got to find out. I'll come back to you, and we'll have a little more in-depth discussion about it. But I wanted to let you know that that's going on, too, and that's the second part of this whole process. OK, thank you, Ken. Okay, and I would like to go right down to item 11, open as the mobile home rent control board. And so we are officially open as a rent control board. And first on the list is a certificate of compliance for the installation of the septic system by Deep Associates. Ken, do you want to talk about that? Let me uh, back it here. There, in your packet, you will see a letter dated March 25, 2015, from me to Mr. Deep, following his presentation before the select board for an increase in rent. And at the time, <clears throat> the board approved a $40 a month increase immediately while he was installing the septic system. And uh, phase two, which was expected, had been done by May of 2016 to, uh, after installing the septic system, getting a certificate of compliance from our Board of Health. Mm -hmm. That has just taken place. And uh, Mr. Deep, you will see a communication from him to me, uh, dated October 9th, saying that it's effective. Here's a certificate, which is attached, and uh, he would is now requesting the additional $40 a month increase in his rent. You'll also see in your packet from our own town code the standards by which uh, rents are adjusted. I had a talk with uh, Ed Fahey about this, and he seemed very happy with that it was done. But on the contrary, too, um, I met with some of the residents up there, and I have many pages of complaints in regards to the uh, construction of this. And there's a couple of them that said there's old septic systems weren't even removed. So I think before we grant him this increase, I think we need to investigate this to make sure this is all done. And I'm, I'm not really It'll probably take a month or so to go through all these to meet with some of the residents and actually see it. And they do have legitimate complaints. They have no other voice but us. So I think we should um, make sure we get our, make sure it's right for them. Okay? And John, do you want to say? No, I just, I move that we uh, postpone the action on this rental re request increase until uh, the meeting in December. I'll second that. Okay. It's December 9th, I think. All those in favor? Oh, we'll be open for discussion. Nope, yep. 
I, we've been waiting since May of 20, er, for May 1st, 2016, it was supposed to be done. Right. So, I mean, I think you can wait a couple months now. Oh, absolutely, I mean, Mark. I totally agree three with years you. from to finish it. So. I mean, I'm going to ask somebody to help me go through all these and help with this. Uh, they had some major environmental problems up there. They did correct them. Uh, I met with his foreman several times I, with Brian, and I walked around, and he has filled in some of the holes in the people's yards from where the old septic fields were. Uh, but there's still quite a few complaints here we need to We should also check with the Conservation Commission I, and the town road boss, see if they have any outstanding issues that remain unaddressed. I can speak for the Conservation Commission. Uh, we're pretty happy with what he did. He went up there, they cleaned everything near the river banks that they dumped in there, and they got it graded off pretty well. Okay. Glengar, 12 Home Terrace. Um, I just wanted to, I'm glad you're pushing this back. I, I, there are probably some more papers out there that I haven't brought back in because I didn't know where this was heading. Would you like me to get the rest of those before December? Yeah, please. From other I mean, residents, because they need just to know didn't get to are. me on time. I mean, stuff like gonna, that. To be honest with you, we're going to address the items oh, for the, the items uh, septic in, field. Yeah. Anything that related to the septic like field. Like so, well, that's good that they got that part. But I'm still concerned with the alarms still going up and issues like that, as far as how it's working. And he, he has started off? filling a few holes. Not my. I don't think he's ever going to come to my house. To be honest with you, but. Um, so they have started some of that, but not completed any of it. Okay. Is and the alarm still going off? I was assured I, it was not doing it anymore. I don't know. Like I said, that was the people down below telling me that. I can double check out on that for you yeah. if you'd like and see if they've gone off recently. Maybe they yeah, haven't I, anymore. I, I, I don't know. I talked to Brian, the so, foreman, and he said he had it fixed. So. Okay. I mean, they might have. I mean, it's been a couple of months since I've heard about that. So I'll just double check and with the residents if you'd like. And, We'll go from there, but and then uh, we'll talk about it in December. Hopefully, you'll take care of some of these other okay. issues. Glenn, yes. I don't think you should wait till December 9th to be. If you, oh, have, I won't wait for no. you have any issues or anybody has any issues, yeah, get them to me as quick as we can. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll get them tomorrow if I can. Okay. <laughs> no, I won't wait till the and he'll notify Mr. D. Yeah. Great. We can get yeah, them fixed. No, I, I won't wait long. Okay. okay. Now, what I plan to do is copy these and give them a copy to Mr. Deep. Okay, that's cool. And and then or meet Brian up there and see what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, I I'm not privy. I don't live down there, so I don't know how when they're going or how long they've been going. I just know that that's in the paperwork. Yeah. That's okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, one, one question for the board on this on this issue. There is no requirement to look at the standards for adjusting rents to notify the residents of Victoria Villa that um, a petition had been made to increase the rents. Shall I, next time we have this on the agenda, notify the residents? Yeah. Okay. That's yes. Oh, before. That was, that was, and we'll that be on the agenda question, tonight. I forget. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, we'll have it on. December's agenda. Our ninth, we'll notify the residents. We'll have all the residents know. Yeah, that's why I was a little confused when I didn't hear about it. And I was like, I'm okay. why didn't the residents hear about this? So, thank you. No, thank you. All right. Okay, now what am I doing with my agenda? Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I got company coming tonight. So. Take care. Uh -oh. <laughs> that's what, that was the real reason why I was worried about this meeting. Thank you. I don't think we voted, right? We made the motion a second, but I don't think we voted. We haven't voted yet. Okay. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. My fault. Okay. We're closing as a mobile home rent control board. Now reopen, and we will go to. The Dalton, I mean, the, we, we visit the master plan. Joe, I'll let you speak to this. Yes, this is a uh, just a request back in September that we could revisit the master plan because as I became a select board member and just looked at different documents, this one kind of popped up as I read through it. And it was done in 2016, so just get an update on items that were 
you know, in the uh, target of that one to three year timeline. I'm just going to check in where we are. So um, I don't think we have the answers tonight, but I think there's a lot of great detail in here that we should just kind of understand uh, pieces and parts and where they are. And uh, just because there are school committee members here, there's also pieces in here that are suggested leadership to help with some of this is CBRSD with some programs. So there's some things in there specifically called out. So I want to make sure that connection is made too uh, on that. So, um, so I'm not sure what's next, but that's kind of my proposal is how do we just get an update generally on this, okay. on this plan. So. The planning board uh, is, is planning and, and has for some time uh, to work with some of the other committees, ask them more details about where they are with the, the various projects have been assigned to different committees, as yep. you can see on the sheet. Yep. Um, unfortunately, the planning board got tied up on some uh, zoning issues uh, on Hubbard <laughs> Avenue, and, and, and yeah, we, we spend almost all our meetings lately uh, on, on that issue. We, we hope that that will end soon and we can get back to uh, other projects that we have actually uh, been postponing on. So uh, it, it probably will take uh, a good two months before we really uh, that's, that's have a, a better update on, on, on what's going on. But I certainly agree with you. Uh, that we, we do want to make sure that uh, some progress is being made on those items. I mean, it's a 10-year plan. There were certain things that are supposed to sort of have been accomplished at three years, which we're past that mark now. Yeah. And we want to make sure that people are aware of the ones that are supposed to be done by five years. Yeah. A lot, a lot of great work on this. When you look at it, so it's, a, it's a thorough plan. It's a lot of great pieces that are uh, called out. A lot of people spend a lot of time on it, and, and the town also spent money on it. Uh, so we do want to uh, make use of it. Yeah. And as we check those boxes off, it would be great to maybe even use that website to announce that those things are complete or in place or yeah. different plans. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an exciting. Edward, is there any way you would be able to uh, investigate the ones that are high priorities for the select board? Yes. Yes. Would you do that? How much time yes. do you think you would need for that? I, I still would probably, it would probably be two months before. Uh, we okay. probably, uh, wow, I mean, it's late in the year already. Wow. Um, so by the first of the year? Yes. Yes. Maybe the first meeting in January. Okay. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah. No, I just, yeah. I appreciate the That'd discussion. be a good goal. Yeah. That would be a good thing yeah. for the new yeah. year. Yeah, and even if we get some of the medium ones knocked on, too. So. Yeah. We'll do our homework. Well, we just need to adjust some timelines and things as, you know, other yeah. things picked up. That's Absolutely. There if something's already, actually got done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's quite a few that <laughs> <things Exactly. got laughs> yeah. side room. Check those off. Celebrate yeah, those yeah. successes. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to mention those several times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for bringing that up, Joe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, next is uh, item 12, approval of the intermunicipal agreement with Berkshire Regional Planning Commission for the stormwater. Mr. Kent. This is the annual agreement that we've had with Regional Planning to give us some staff assistance as we um, implement our stormwater management plan. So that we appointed someone new to the Stormwater Management Commission this evening. Uh, the scope of services is attached to the first part of this, so you can see exactly what the Regional Planning Commission staff does for us. And I didn't ask Melissa, who has been the principal staff person, Melissa Preventure, uh, for many years. I didn't ask her to be here, but if you want a more complete report as to what they've been doing, I can ask her to come at another time. So this is a simple intermunicipal agreement. It's a, for eleven thousand dollars. We never spend half of that usually, but at least it gives us uh, enough enough of a budget so that if we have run into something unusual, we can do that. We're into a whole new round uh, in the so-called National Pollution Discharge Elimination System permit, new five-year permit, and we've got to uh, implement some different things that we haven't done before. Uh, until recently, I was a member of the Stormwater Management Commission, and I could say that Melissa, well, really very valuable service. We wouldn't have had anything uh, um, that would have satisfied, I suspect, the uh, the DEP if, if it wasn't for her and the EPA. Yeah, she's top notch. When I was on there, she yeah. was invaluable. Um, Ken, you're supposed to sign this, right? Yeah. So, so you want us to vote to give you. Authorize you to sign this, please. Mr. Chairman, I move that we authorize the town manager, Kenneth Walto, to sign 
the renewal, the annual renewal agreement between the Berkshire Regional Planning Commission and the Town of Dalton as regards the stormwater. I will second that. Okay, a motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. And they're going to get into the eventually how much our water we're getting into our sewer systems from the storm drains. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because we're getting charged. <laughs> we're getting charged for that. Yeah. yeah. The I and I program. That's all. It's actually a requirement that we actually do that. Okay. Uh, by the by the state. And When's that going to start, Ken? Well, we really have to renew our agreement with Tommy Bond. Mm hmm. And then they'll, they'll start right away to do the work yeah. on the INI. There is, of course, a, a cost associated with this. Yeah. yeah. It's called megabucks. Yeah. But I assume they won't start till the spring, which could be an opportune time. Yeah, probably one of the better times for you. Yeah, because they'll, 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 the next planned part of the INI study is to look at exactly where the discharge is coming from. We know general areas, but now we're going to go look at specifically where it's coming from. Good. And then down the road, we are supposed to repair those areas. Yeah. Okay. Right. Cost the end. Okay. Millions. Yep. Let's see if we can bounce around. I want to make sure we're back on track. Okay. Town manager updates. Ken, you're on. Okay. The first item I want to report to you about is North Mountain Park. North Mountain Park, you remember, we completed the environmental study, but we haven't completed the remediation. And we've been really waiting because the Regional Planning Commission uh, applied for more money from the Environmental Protection, Federal Environmental Protection Agency for their so-called revolving loan fund. And uh, the original cost to do the study and, and to clean it up was thought to be $28,000, but the um, engineers, TRC, Environmental, submitted us a, a supplemental request for appropriation that's in the area of $9,000. That will actually remove the tank and whatever other uh, residual oil. It's only oil that's there. So we, Becky Slick, is working on an application for us. They just got the, the money. And so Becky's going to submit an application. We're going to ask probably for $11,000, again, at Melissa Preventure's suggestion to make sure that we um, get it cleaned up. That's really where we are. Okay. Can they do it during the winter time or? I think so. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It's really a matter of getting the money in. Even though it's in a revolving loan fund, typically municipalities don't have to pay it back and expect to have money paying it. It becomes a grant. Great. The next item I have for you, is there any, any questions about that? The next item I have for you is uh, the tax rate setting schedule. Our fiscal team is hard at work, particularly the assessor's office and the accountant's office, completing those schedules we need to get our tax rate set. And you can see the schedule. I annually do this, and then I sit down and we, we look at the schedule to make sure it's real. The goal is to get our tax bills out by the end of December. That's the goal. So um, we are about in the middle of the process. We have to have one critical piece of the tax classification hearing in front of the select board. And we've tentatively, with your approval, have scheduled that for Monday, November 18th. So that will be a special meeting. It's not on the, on the regular meeting schedule. But uh, November the 11th, which would be our usual meeting, is a holiday. So we moved it back to the 18th. And okay. uh, it's important that we do it at that date so that we can wrap things up, get approval from the Department of Revenue for the tax rate, and then get the bills out the door. Okay. Is everybody okay with that? The next item, we should have some information about Hampshire Power. You remember, the electric company that supplied our power was not an electric company at all. It was the Hampshire Council of Governments and their electricity arm, power arm called Hampshire Power. You might remember uh, a few months ago, I told you that the Commonwealth was... Um, dissolving Hampshire Council of Governments. Hampshire Power is going to survive, but it's going to be uh, put into what something called something new that I've just learned about. It's called the Benefit Corporation. It's a for-profit corporation with a public purpose built into its articles of organization. It's called a public benefit corporation. So it's going to be a for-profit corporation 
And uh, in the meantime, what has happened here is that that was dissolved. You had, at the time I brought this to you, had authorized uh, a, an assignment of the contract to a private sector firm, I think it was called Sun Power. Well, that didn't happen because the corporation was, or the, the governmental organization was dissolved. So our accounts have been transferred back to uh, Eversource, supplying all of our electricity now. And um, Eversource reprices electricity every six months. So um, it's our rates are set to go up pretty shortly. So what you see in front of you is a proposal by Hampshire Power um, to stay with them for at least a year. And I think the supplier is going to be Sunwave. Uh, but they are offering to supply power at the same rate as we have presently contracted with the Hampshire Council of Governments. And our contract was to have run through the end of October, but as I said, they've already been switched back to other source. I'm looking at these three for nine cents. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, you can't compare that to Western Mass or yeah. Eversource. Yeah, it might go up to about 13 cents for the yeah. winter time, but it comes down. It comes down in the spring. Every price every six months, and they have a they have a, a statutory obligation to get power for us at the best rates that they can. The advantage of going with something like with a with a group like this is that you, your rates are stable over the year. They don't fluctuate up and down. Now, people with solar arrays. If they rent them, they still have to pay a little electric to sad times. Now, would they be eligible for this decrease, or are they? This is only for a town government. This okay. isn't the so-called. You know, we're in an aggregation plan too, where any resident can take advantage of the uh, aggregation prices. Mm -hmm. This is uh, unique to the town government. Okay, are they going to propose another one for the residents? No, that right now is being handled through uh, Colonial Power as okay. a supplier under the aggregation plan. Okay. So this is only for the town government. It would only be for a year. Uh, I spoke to the person who wrote to me, Marin Goldstein. Um, he, he's also the guy working on the Cow Power Project. And he was at our, the opening down there. And, you know, I, I asked him about this. The reason I'm getting into benefit corporations and all of that is that it presents contracting problems. You could have a simple, you could have an intermunicipal agreement with any other municipal entity uh, without jumping through a lot of hoops. You can just agree. If you agree, just like we did with regional planning. If you all agree, then we sign up. With something like this, I'm not quite sure what the contracting process is, although there is an exemption in the state <coughs> law for um, power contracts or energy contracts. So. If you like this and you'd like me to go forward with it, what I'll do is I'll talk to the Inspector General's office and make sure that we're following the proper process. I mean, yeah, because there appears to be an exemption in state law. I just haven't used it. But the other municipalities that remember Hampshire Power had a particular service in providing this power to municipalities and governments all over Western Mass. He, he tells me that, that the governments, the other governments that receive power from them, have signed up and they haven't really raised these issues. But. Yes, that's a problem. And you probably saw this. There's a phone number on the bottom here yeah. to contact your legal staff. 617727. No, I didn't see that. Yeah. That's an attractive price, to be honest with well, you. Well, it is, so I think we should. Maybe a start if you're looking for yeah. legalities of this. Yep. So, do you need a motion or do yes, you. Yes, so, so I move forward with it. We need consensus, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 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 The Habitat Project, we just, I, I got in touch with Habitat for Humanity to ask them where they were, we do. Remember, we sent them a purchase and sale agreement. Attached to that was a land disposition agreement. Uh, I hadn't heard back from them. I got in touch with them. I just got the documents back this afternoon, and I haven't had a chance to really go into it at all to know what their uh, reservations are. One thing I saw was our documents <clears throat> required that us, required that we have a preference for residents of Dalton. But according to what I was told, unless we had multi-family units, multiple units, we could set aside 70% primarily for Dalton residents. But when you have one unit, we can't do that because it has to be done by lottery. So okay. that's the only thing I know about it right now. Okay. You know whether there's going to be any action on this, on the disposition of the property, the closing? 
No, um, no, because they just got the documents back with John. So See, we did this back in June, didn't we? Yeah, or June, June, July. I got it right out there. Yeah, you know. and they're the ones that pushed it for us to get it done. I don't have any other items that I can think of. Uh, okay. And if anybody has any questions, I have a question for you. What about some of these houses around town? I I see just like uh, notices on the. Abandoned houses now. What do we do with them? Well we've <clears throat> You might remember that we've got the um, attorney general looking at that under yeah. the receivership program to see which So as far as I know, they're still investigating. We haven't had any results They're supposed to get back to us tell us which houses would fit in the receivership program Yeah, that, that'd be good to get that moving so we can get them back on a tax for a while. Well, I, I'll talk to Ed. We're talking, yeah, I was talking to Ed about the same issue about about junk houses He wanted like down the street from me. Anyway, he yeah. said the same thing. There's this new program by the Attorney General that they can evaluate yeah. it and put them in a receivership or they can facilitate the disposition or correction of the property. So, right. and should have had you know more about this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for Ken? Okay. Uh, remarks of the select board? I just have one. It's another question for Ken. Has there been any movement on the APR land? Yes, I got a commit. I got a communication, email communication from the Commissioner of Agriculture, who said that he's assigned staff to take a look at this and he's going to get back to us on it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. <clears throat> Anyone else? I have a question for Ken. Can you just check in on the uh, the crosswalks for Main Street? I'm glad you raised that issue too. Put it on here. We, we had trouble coming to agreement with the with the um, Department of Transportation on how we were exactly to do this. So we had a meeting out in the field. And unfortunately, the results of that meeting was we don't have the engineering expertise to give them what they want. So I'm going to hire an engineer to draw up the plans as we did out there at the corner of uh, Route 8 and Housatonic Street. So that's where we are. Okay. But at least we, we know we know what hurdles we have to face. And we went out all together with the state engineers. Uh, to the okay. Don't they understand it's a big safety problem? Okay. Ken, is that for both locations? Or both locations. One? Good. Yeah. One other con for great community event coming up this Friday and Saturday at uh, Wakona High School for Arsenic and Old Lace. Uh, great performance, and uh, I think the stage looks wonderful. I banged a few nails on that myself. So, uh, uh, but the kids are ready, and a uh, great group over there. So it's Friday and Saturday this week. Okay. So I think it's 7 o'clock, and tickets are, I think, $9 for adults and 7 for students, if I'm not mistaken. And that's at Wakona? Wakona High School, yeah. Okay. Okay. Brings us to items for future agendas. Is there any? I have uh, one I saw in a file of uh, information in the in our conference room. A letter from uh, uh, Mr. Scott Clements regarding his dog <laughs> I license. I got it right on my list. Right? Yeah. yeah. So his uh, his his request is that he has a service dog, and, and he pointed out to the master on a law that there should not be a dog license for a service dog, but our bylaws and the town don't um, um, make that clear. So he, he paid us twenty dollars, but he was just bringing to our attention that uh, under Mass Law we may want to consider that. So it's something we may want to get on the town warrant uh, or change a bylaw. If there's a, another avenue to change that, I don't know. Yeah, we need to put that on the agenda to talk about. It, so. Okay. Yep. Uh, we can put that on November. Sure. And Edward, I'm going to put you on for January. How's that for the master plan? In what year? Double two oh two oh two oh. Okay, we know where you look. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else for items of future attendance? Okay. That brings us to our announcements. State Representative Paul Mark holds office hours at the Dalton Town Hall in the Callahan room on Tuesdays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. with the exception of the third Tuesday of each month. On the third Tuesday, office hours are 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Town Hall and from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Dalton Senior Center. You can reach Mark at his district number which is 413-464-5635.
I hold office hours by appointment in the town hall or at the senior center. For further information or schedule an appointment, please call 413-684-6111, extension 11. The Dalton Green Committee and Board of Appeals are both looking for new members. If interested, please contact the town manager's office at 684-6111, extension 11. Larry Parnas from the Berkshire Eagle is on a fellowship in May. He assures the town that the Berkshire Eagle will continue to cover the news from the town. I declare an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the public body. Mr. Chairman, I move that we adjourn to executive session in preparation for litigation and not return to open session. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, motion's been made and second to roll call vote, Mark. Yes. Edward. Yes. John. Yes. Joe. Yes. Bob, yes. We're in recess for five minutes and then we'll reconvene.